Hello and welcome. In today's class, we'll be looking at the circular cube problem that appeared in ISC Computer Science 2020 theory paper. So, according to the question, a circular cube is a linear data structure which works on the principle of FIFO, first in, first out, enables the user to enter data from the rear end and remove data from the front end with the rear end connected to the front end to form a circular pattern. So if I have a circular queue where we have the capacity of five elements and let's say our circular queue is currently full, then it's not possible to insert an element. But if we delete an element, let's say I delete the frontmost element, 25, so a space will be created at the front. And now 72 becomes the frontmost element. Now because it is a circular queue, the rear end is connected to the front end. So it is possible to insert an element at index 0. So rear is pointing to index 4. From 4, it can go back to index 0 and point to the first block. And then over there, we can insert a new element. So this is the concept of a circular queue. You have to assume or you have to imagine this array as a circular layout. And that's why, because from index 4, we are going back to index 0. That's why we say that it is a circular queue. These are the specifications of the class. So the class name is circular queue. Then we have an array to store the integers. We have the capacity to store the maximum capacity of the array. Uh, the front variable to point to the index of the front end. The rear variable to point to the index of the rear end. Then we have a constructor to initialize the data members. Capacity will be initialized with max. Front and rear will be initialized as zero. Then we have the push function to insert an element if possible. Otherwise, we display Q is full. And the pop function that returns the element that was deleted if there are any elements present. Otherwise, it returns minus 9999. And then void show to display the queue elements presently available in the circular queue. So we have to specify the class circular queue giving details of the functions void push and int pop. Assume that the other functions have been defined. The main function and algorithm need not be written. But as I said earlier also in my previous videos, if you want to run the program, then you need to include main. If you want to test circular queue, you need to include all the functions, you need to include main, and that's what we'll be doing in this video. And the second part of the question, how is a linear queue structure different from a circular queue structure? So I think the answer is already given in the question. If we go back to our previous slide, the answer is already given here that in a circular queue, the front end and the rear end are connected. Whereas this is not the case in the normal queue. So this can be the answer of the second part of the question. Now let's look at the program. So here I have created a file circular queue and the class name we have firstly started with the import statement obviously and then we have created a class circular queue. We have an array variable, uh, the capacity front and rear, and then we have the constructor to initialize the data members. And then we have the push function. Now here, I am using the cap variable, capacity variable to check whether the queue is full or not. So if capacity is zero, that means it's not possible to insert more elements. That means it is having zero capacity now. So if cap is zero, then we print Q is full. Otherwise, we insert an element into the queue, into the rear end of the queue, and we update rear, not by rear plus plus, but by using this code, rear is equal to rear plus one, modulus the length of the queue. So this will, this code, line number 18, this code will guarantee that it will be a circular layout. 
the rear end and the front end will always be connected. So after the last index, let's say index 4, it will not be index 5, but from 4, it will change back to index 0. And since one element has been inserted, the capacity will decrease. By default, the capacity will be the maximum, let's say 5. And each time, let's say one element is added, so the capacity will keep decreasing also. So from 5, it will become 4. That means now the capacity is 4. Only 4 elements can be inserted. So similarly, now we have the pop function. If the capacity is equal to the length, that means if the array size is 5 and the capacity is also 5, that means my queue is empty. So it will return minus 9999. Otherwise, we store the value that is there in the frontmost location and then we increase the front using the same code that we used in push. So front is equal to front plus 1 modulus cq.length. Again, this will guarantee that after index 4, it will not change to index 5, but it will go back to 0 because 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 modulus 5 will give us 0. And then cap plus plus, that means capacity increases. Each time you delete, the capacity increases, so cap plus plus. And if front is equal to rear, that means uh, all the uh, elements have been deleted and we reset the queue by setting them back to zero, front and rear to zero. And after that, we return the value that was deleted. Then we have the show function. So again, we have to first of all check if the queue is empty or not. So if the capacity is equal to the length, that means the queue is empty. Otherwise, we take a variable i that starts from front and we take a count also. The count is cq.length. Now, while count is greater than the capacity, we keep printing the element. And again, i is equal to i plus 1 modulus cq.length. We cannot write i plus plus because it is a circular queue. And then count minus minus. So as long as count is greater, we keep printing the elements and then we decrease the count also. And once horizontally all the values are printed because I've used print, the values will be printed horizontally. And then we use the println function, empty println function to go to the next line. And now we have the main function. So in main, we first of all ask for the size of the queue and we create the circular queue object. Then we are running an infinite loop to display the menu. We ask for the choice whether the user wants to push, pop or display. And we take help of the switch case. We put the choice in switch. And if it's case one, that means the user wants to insert an element. So we ask for the element and we pass it to the push function and then break. Then in case two, we receive the value that was deleted. If the value of D is minus 9999, this indicates that the queue was empty. It wasn't possible to delete an element. The pop operation was not successful. So we print queue is empty. Else we display that this particular element was popped or deleted. And to display the elements, we are calling the show function break. And default, if none of the cases match, then it prints by and then return. Return means return from main. And because we exit from main, the program terminates. So that's the program. Let's check the output. So we execute. So it's asking for the queue size. So I'm entering five. Now it is giving me a menu, push, pop, or display. So if I go for pop, it will display that the queue is empty. You can see over here, queue is empty. And if I uh, go for option three, then also queue is empty. Now, if I go for option one, then it is asking for the element to be pushed. Let's say 12. Again, I want to insert an element, 23. Again, 34. 
45, 56, 67. Now, when I'm going to insert the sixth element, it is showing that the queue is full. So, if I go for option 3 now, it displays all the elements that are currently there in the queue. And now, I can delete also. So, if I delete, 12 is the first element, so 12 should be deleted. So, if I go for option 2, you can see 12 is popped. And if I select option 3 again, it displays that right now I only have four elements left in the queue. And it is still possible to insert an element. So if I choose option one, because the front element was deleted, that means one place has been created. So if I enter, uh, let's say 67, and again I choose option three, so you will see that the 67 is the last element that was inserted and 23 is still the first element, the frontmost element. And let's delete all the elements now one by one. So 2, 23 popped, 24 popped, 45, 56, 67. Again, the queue is empty. This way you can carry on and you can keep testing the program. And if you want to stop, you choose any other option. Let's say option four and the program stops. So that's the circular queue concept and the circular queue program. I hope you have understood how circular queue works. Thank you for watching and see you soon in the next class.